Hello there, my very good friends. Andy Murray here for What Culture Wrestling, and today we're going to be talking about somebody who we haven't dedicated a whole lot of time to on this channel, but someone who I think stands as one of the most interesting young prospects in all of wrestling today. I am, of course, talking about AEW's Anna J. But before we do that, a little shout out to my twin from another bin, Michael Sidgwick, who wrote the article on which this video is based. There'll be a link to that down in the description below, so check it out once we're done here, because Michael's very good, the article's very good, obviously, and you are very good as well, it's a match made in heaven. But before all that, join me as we discuss the huge, untapped potential of AEW's Anna J. So the global wrestling shutdown in March had a big impact on AEW and the personnel they could and couldn't use. We saw the likes of John Moxley, the Young Bucks, Hangman Page, MJF, all unable to get to the shows for filming. So AEW had a real shortage on their hands. One of their solutions to that was to head up to Georgia, to QT Marshall's gym, and utilize some of the trainees there, some of the young prospects coming through that system. And if you look at the lineup of the average episode of Dark, a whole bunch of them are still there. One of the main beneficiaries of this was Anna Jay, and she still is, to be fair, she's all elite now. But her debut match came on one of these episodes of Dynamite from QT's gym, and it was against Hikaru Shida. And you might have looked at that pairing ahead of time and gone, well, this is just going to be a squash match, right? It's going to be two minutes in and out, job done, no offence for the loser. It wasn't that, though. Now, admittedly, it was only five minutes long, but this was a well-worked affair. This was back and forth. Anna Jay got her fair share of offence in en route to defeat, but it was no squash, and she threw everything into every strike, including clotheslines that weren't even supposed to connect that Hikaru Shida dodged. This performance attracted a fair bit of attention for Anna J online, and this was amplified tenfold after the show when the true level of her inexperience came to light. It turns out that this wasn't match number 100 for Anna J, it wasn't even match number 50, number 25, or even match number 10. This was match number 6, the sixth match of her entire pro wrestling career. And there she was on the bright lights of national television, holding her own against a skilled, experienced opponent who's had over 1,200 matches in her career. Since then, things have only gotten better for Anna J. She went away for a couple of months before re-emerging in June, and AEW went to great lengths to promote this re-debut. It was the star of the show, Anna J. She was getting a spotlighted match. She even got that announcement where it was like, Anna J will be in action. The opponent wasn't even named. Everything about it told you that Anna J was going to swoop in, defeat some jobber in a couple of minutes, and start climbing the ladder. Well, that didn't happen. In really shocking fashion, actually, we got to that episode of Dynamite, the 11th of June, and she was just destroyed by Abaddon. The monster crushed her in just a couple of minutes. It was an almighty swerve, and the kind of defeat that led perfectly to her being scooped up by Brody Lee and the Dark Order. Since then, number 99 has been a revelation. The whole deal there was perfect for the Dark Order, right? Because they prey on people who are down on their luck. And Anna Jay, the star of the show, who'd had this big hype debut, had just been destroyed. She was down on her luck. She was the perfect addition. And then a few months later, when we get to the Saturday night episode of Dynamite, Brody Lee crushing Cody to win the TNT Championship. Anna Jay comes out in the post-match angle, plays an important role, and she's on screen with this immense presence in Brody Lee, and of course Cody as well, although he was obviously down on the ground at the time. But the fact is, she was sharing the screen with these stars in this promotion, and she didn't feel dwarfed at all. As we all know, she choked Brandy Rhodes out. It was a really shocking way to close an already shocking angle. And the look of like killer glee on her face was performed without even a hint of hamminess. That's quite an achievement because in every company in the world, you've got wrestlers who've been on TV for, I don't know, 10 years, who just straight up can't act. Yet she was pulling this off effortlessly. In professional wrestling, there are just certain traits that can't always be taught. 
If you're like stiff as a board, really wooden, can't act, can't emote, can't show any form of charisma whatsoever, you're not going to be able to walk into a state-of-the-art gym and be able to do that six matches later. Some people have this innate ability to unlock these things within themselves very, very quickly. And it's quite clear from Anna Jay's early performances that she's one of them. Now, that isn't to discredit the hard work she has put in to get to this point, because everyone who gets to this point has put in a whole lot of hard work. But it's fair to say that viewing her performances several months on from her debut, she's a natural at this. Coming away from choking out Brandy Rhodes, Anna Jay was dubbed the Queen Slayer, it's a hell of a nickname, and she was thrown in as an extended part of the big feud between the Dark Order and the Nightmare Family. It's her, it's Brandy Rhodes, and they wrestled each other on the Tuesday night episode of Dynamite. Dynamite Live, what was it called? Late Night Dynamite, there we go, I'm an idiot, but that was the show. This match was no less remarkable than the Sheeta match. This was the simple story of Brandy fired up, coming for revenge for what the Dark Order had done to her bloodied, broken husband against this new, fully formed heel version of Anna J. It's really simple, but it was performed exceedingly effectively. This match, if anything, it over-delivered. It was heated, it was snug, they were working for each other's spots, they gave a real impression that their characters absolutely hated each other. And Anna J, from this performance, for somebody who had barely wrestled, showed that she was quite exceptional at losing herself in a performance. And by the way, this was match number 13 of her career. Against a part-timer. You know, sloppy is a word that a lot of people like to throw around in professional wrestling. It's been used a lot to describe the AEW women's division when things haven't gone particularly well, and sometimes it's fair. Sometimes, however, it most certainly is not. However, if I think you're going to use that word to describe Anna Jay, you're really outing yourself as somebody who just isn't watching her work, because that's not a tenable opinion to have. For somebody who has only worked this amount of matches, she is remarkably assured in the ring. She is coping with the pressures, with the bright lights, with entering that ring, knowing that if it's a live show she can't make a mistake, and knowing that there are hundreds and thousands of people at home watching this match. She has done all this almost like it's nothing. At least that's the impression her performances give, and in pro wrestling, the performance is everything. Anna Jay always looks composed out there. She always looks like she belongs on this stage and her fundamentals are rock solid. She's got great footwork, great timing. She runs the ropes well. She puts an extra bit of snap into every single strike. And sure, all right, I'm pretty sure if you spent enough time and if you wanted to pick enough holes, you could probably pick a microscope up and analyze every little detail and find a few imperfections here and there. But again, 13 matches, guys. Come on. At just 22 years old, she already projects a character, charisma, and star power. And while I'm sure she has a long way to go before she's the finished article, it's safe to say that AEW and QT Marshall have unearthed a real gem here. You know, Anna Jay's 22 years old. A traditional wrestler's peak is around the early 30s. That means she's almost a full decade away from that. If she continues on her current trajectory, that nickname, the star of the show, well, it won't just be a nickname anymore. She could be frighteningly good. Anyway, guys, that's it. My take on AEW's Anna J is done. But as always, I'm interested to know what you guys think. So go ahead and chime in down in the comment section below. After you've done that, you can like, you can share, you can subscribe. Click the bell, ring the ding-a-ling notifications. You know what to do. Then follow us on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE and myself at Andy H. Murray, where in this case, you can tell me how right I am. Goodbye.